Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golan. We're back in Foundry VTT, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at a new add on, one that we've not really talked about very much and we've certainly not looked at before, and it's called Levels. So, this is a, another one by the Ripper93, who also did Wall Height, we looked at recently. Um, and this really is kind of an extension to that. So we need to have um, wall height installed to be able to do levels. Um, and it sort of takes it to the next level. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> oh, couldn't have planned that better. Uh, so <laughs> I'm in that test world here. And you can see on the screen right now uh, what we've actually got installed. So we've got the Ripper's 93 uh, module hub, which just keeps us up to date, up to date with um, upgrades and changes to any of the modules that are produced by the Ripper 93, um, because he's got quite a lot of them. Um, and we have to have wall height installed. We have to have that lib wrapper stuff as well. So those are the only things we've got installed here. Um, it's not going to reset it because I've already saved those settings. So uh, again, we're in our test world. I have created a completely new scene. I've just called it Levels Barn so that we can have a look at this. Um, and I've just chucked out a completely plain grass type scene here for us to work on. Because most of what we're doing is actually to do with tiles. Now, uh, before I get into this and anybody accuses me of cheating, I'm not cheating, but I want to show you over on the other screen what I've got here. So this is um, the wiki that covers all of the Ripper 93's various modules and things. Uh, you can see down the left hand side, you know, all of the free ones he has. Um, they're in here, including things like wall height that we've looked at um, and other stuff. And also a whole bunch of premium bits. Now, you know that uh, I try to avoid um, modules and assets of things that we have to pay for because it's just not an option for a lot of people. Um, but we will cover a whole bunch of those, um, so the premium ones as well uh, as these, uh, as the free ones as we get to them. Uh, com sorry, the Carousel Combat Tracker that um, we use and that I love is also one of Ripper 93's. So this wiki is really, really useful. So the reason I'm showing you this is because for the levels one, which is a little bit complex, or can be, there's this really handy little guide here. I know you can't read it, I'm scrolling too fast. Um, there's a really handy little guide here for how to actually use it. So effectively I'm going to be following that um, and just demonstrating it for you rather than you reading and playing yourself. I'm going to run through it, you can see how it works, we can have a look at what we like and what we don't like. Okay, so I've got my scene. First thing I need to do is make sure I've got my modules installed, we've seen that we've done that. Um, and what we notice on the left hand side we've got another new little icon here called levels and if I click on that everything vanished <laughs> but I've got this uh, little box over here da, 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 which sits in the top right hand corner I'm just going to make that bigger so that we can see and this literally is what's going to control our levels and what we're doing um, among here now there's some options down at the bottom um, so things like showing players uh, draw, sorry, place drawings as stairs, roofs view, um, place tiles as overhead tiles inside levels. We've got add new levels and we've got edit levels and we've got levels from scene. Okay, so we've got a group of different things that we can do here. So what I'm going to do is literally walk through this guide in the other window uh, just to show you what to do. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to add some levels. So I literally can click this little cross button and you can see up the top here, I know it's quite small, um, but trust me it's there. Um, it's create, We've created ourselves two new levels. Now if I use this edit button, edit levels, I can now actually rename these. Okay, so I can call them first floor and I can call them ground floor just to confuse all of the Americans out there who kind of go, no, first floor, second floor. Well, us British, it's ground floor, first floor. <laughs> yeah, start off confusing people. Okay, so these next two columns here are defining the floor and ceiling height of each level effectively. So our ground floor is going to be at zero. Uh, and our ceiling height is going to be at 10. For the first floor, well, that ceiling height is going to start at 10, 
uh, sorry, that floor height is going to start at 10 and the ceiling height is going to be at 20. So you get me? So, yeah, if, you're, if your feet are on the ground, you've got 10 feet above you for the ceiling. If your feet are at 10 feet, you're on the upper floor with a ceiling 10 feet above that, if that makes sense to you. So that's the very first thing we can do is put in our levels here. We can stop editing now. We've got these in, which is great. Uh, and we can just click between each of these. Nice and easy. So um, now what we want to do is, so again, we, yep, I'm just checking because I don't want to mess this up and get it wrong for you, is we now want to place some of our tiles. So with the level selected, um, anything I, so with whichever level I've got selected, whatever I place tiles wise will be placed on that level. So the first thing I want to do is to be on the ground floor, I'm going to go over to the left hand side and I'm going to go to the tile browser. Now what's really useful is there are some stuff, there's some stuff we can play with straight away um, for tiles and we can go and look at um, you know those things that are already in there. So if I go into modules here um, and if I scroll down and I go to levels because it's already in here. There's some sample maps now. Bailey Wiki has uh, uh, donated some maps for this purpose, and we can see we've got some different assets. Now, if you need to know names of assets, if you click on the images view, it just makes it a bit bigger for you, so that you can actually see what was what asset was it I wanted. Now we're going to be playing with this barn. So this is barn level one. Let's slap that out there, uh, and this is what it looks like, and it's a tile. Now remember this is a tile on the ground floor and this is a ground floor image. Okay, good, that's a good start. All right, so what do I need to do next? Well, like anything else, I need to put walls in. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my walls tool. You've seen me do walls hundreds of times. Sometimes really well, sometimes not so well. Let's just slap all the walls in in places where walls make sense, just like we would for anything else. Uh, and I'm actually going to make these two barn doors separate doors. I also going to do the same over here for this little uh, this little storage shed. Let me just move that a little bit. Now, because I've got the walls module installed, when I hover over any of these, can you see it saying the bottom is at zero and the top is at ten? because it knows it's automatically looking going, hang on a minute, we've got another level above this. This ground floor only goes from zero to 10. So these walls are automatically showing at zero to 10. Now I want to highlight, highlight both of those and I'm gonna change those to be doors. And of course I can add sounds to them if I wanted to, I don't need to bother for this purpose, but look at wall height. Okay, so just confirming it's automatically set those for us, which is great. Uh, I'm going to do the same down here, could have done them all at the same time. Create this as a door, they're going to be closed um, and I'm going to make those heavy wooden doors, just why not. Anywhere else that we feel that we need to put walls? Well we've got these stalls haven't we? Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to say that they're fencing, they can see through them etc, they can climb over them, they're not particularly high. Depends what they're, what those stalls are for, if they're for pigs or something, um, they don't need to be particularly high. But for simplicity purposes, let's not do that. All right, so we've done the walls. Now we want to look at the upper floor. So on the right hand side in our levels, we're going to click on first floor. All my walls have disappeared because there's no walls up here. We're now floating above that ground floor. Uh, and we now need to go back to our tile browser. And we now need to find, let's just move this over to the left. Uh, I know it's this one, but again, if I open this up, we can see this is barn level two. And yeah, I haven't dumped that perfectly, but that's okay, because I'm going to move it. And this should line up, so we can see we've got those posts there, and we should be able to line up this one. And it's just snapped into exactly the right place. So remember, we're now on the upper floor. Um, we've got that in, it's at the same scale beautifully done we can now go in and add walls for this as well so uh, let's start down here the excitement of watching me do walls right now remember these walls go on take a guess how high these walls are going to be 
they're also going to be 10 foot. They're going to start at 10 foot high uh, and they're going to finish at 10 foot. Uh, I've just put that in because I'm going to make that a window. Now this is a walkway here. So what we don't want is people just walking off and falling down. So I am going to put a wall around here, a wonky wall, admittedly. <laughs> Shush you. Um, but I am going to do that. Uh, this I'm going to make a window at the bottom here. So uh, restrict movement, yes. Light restriction, none. Sight restriction, none. Sound restriction, none. Absolutely fine. That's effectively gives us a window. Uh, and these ones here, because that's an edge we don't want them just falling off of, whether we say there's a railing or not, let's have it restrict movement. But again, not going to restrict light, not going to restrict sight, not going to restrict sound. I mean, you could choose to go with the um, proximity attenuation so that, you know, if they're right by the edge, they can see everything. But to be honest, this is such a narrow walkway, they can either see or they can't. Um, and again, something else to draw your attention to, wall height here, it automatically it said the bottom is at 10, the top is at 20. Beautiful. Save that. Another wonky. <laughs> I can't do I can't do a video and get it perfect, all right? Because that will that will confuse you all. All right, so um just checking in the other thing. Have I done everything I need to? Have I missed anything? Um, so we've done that. Uh, we've done the walls. So I'm now on step 11 already. This is how, I mean, it's only a, it's a, it's a quick little guide, but it's really, really clear to follow. I can follow it and I'm an idiot. So you guys will be fine. Um, right. We will need to enable the settings on this floor so that we can see it when on the ground floor. Okay. So what we want to do now is go to the first floor tile. Um, so I want to go to my tiles. I want to select and I want to pick that tile and I want to double click it to bring up this tile. OK, so remember, we're on the first floor. So this is the first floor tile. It's not the ground floor one. And we can go over to levels here uh, and you can see that top is 20, bottom is 10. So we know we're looking at the correct one and we can do show even when below. OK, so just a small text here. If enabled, the tile will show even if the token is below the bottom height range. So it says example use balconies. And that's effectively what this walkway is. It's like a balcony. So if you're in the middle here, you can see it even if you're not on it, obviously. Um, and there's a few other options here about all walls, block sight, strict range. Don't hide this tile in fog. For some reason you want that if you want your fog to be of a certain level, like, you know, um, if you want, let's say you've got a tower um, and you might have fog of war and things, but no matter whereabouts they are on the map, they can see this tower above the trees and everything else. You could have those higher levels of the tower not hit by the fog of war because they can always see it, even if they're not close to it. That's how I interpret that being a useful thing to do. OK, so actually all we need to do is click that one when we're below. Brilliant. So show when we're below. Brilliant. Now we need to add a roof. Now we're not going to add a third level for the roof in the way that we've got a ground floor and a first floor because we're not intending for them to walk on the roof. Okay. So over here on the right hand side, back in this layers tool, we do have a roof views placement. Now if I click that active, I can then go back to my tiles browser. Okay, I'm just going to go to the bigger images and I've got barn roof here and I'm going to drag that over. Now again, it doesn't matter if I haven't lined it up perfectly to start with because obviously I can then make adjustments for that. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we've now got a roof in hopefully in the correct position. It certainly looks like it. Um, that's good. Now let's head down to the ground floor. Boop. Can't see the roof anymore, can't see the balcony anymore because we're down on the ground floor, which is fine. We're looking at the correct tiles. Um, but we've got this little shed here on the side and we need to put a roof on that because that is only the one that's only on the ground floor. So we need to go back to our tiles again. And yep, you've already seen it very conveniently. We've got a roof section for this too. Um, Slap that on, make sure we're happy with its placement. 
that'll do very nicely thank you I'm, I'm happy with that so now we've got a roof on there as well and the reason why that's a roof is because I've still got this roof view placement toggle okay so on this floor if I toggle this on and off it will show me roof not show me roof show me roof not show me roof if I go to the first floor show me the roofs don't show me the roofs show me the roofs don't show me the roofs nifty huh all right so um, we've done that so the last step we need to do is uh, back to the ground floor is we have a ladder here this ladder comes up here to the first floor so somehow we want to create a, uh, a trigger now previously we have looked at active tile triggers where we could go well actually if they step on this tile here uh, teleport them to here we could do that now that's useful for moving across the map and stuff like that but actually we want to move them up um, so we're going to do something different here and this is a built-in function of of, of uh, the layers thing which is good so I uh, just want to check place uh, uh, what I want to do is go to my drawings layer okay uh, now before I do that I need to be really careful um, I'm just checking yep I want to head to the drawings layer here uh, place a square drawing where the ladder is located on the top of the barn it will create a stair so basically I want to create a boom that there now what I've not done and the reason why this just hasn't worked uh, not doing what it's supposed to is because I need to toggle this on over here can you see on the right place drawings as stairs so instead of just drawing a box by clicking that now when I draw my box it is automatically said oh hang on a minute you're not drawing a box you're drawing a stair area uh, and that's done that straight away for us which is great now I can go to select and I can double select this drawing. Um, you can see its bottom height is at zero and its top height is at nine. And that's quite important because we, this is how it works. We don't need to change that. It's done it automatically. Um, levels drawing mode. Just bring your attention to this. We've got stair, which basically means it goes in both directions. You can go up the stairs, you can go down the stairs. Um, you can create stairs one way up or one way down now that might be really useful if you've got something like a, a greased pole think of a fire a, a fire brigade pole and they slide down that you might choose to have somewhere where yep they slide down the pole into the cavern but they can't climb back up it that's not going to happen uh, unless they actually you know use other methods fly spells or whatever um, so you could do that once they go down they ain't coming back up that way um, if you wanted to we're going to leave it as normal stair um, we don't need to change any of these things we can change the text here rather than stairs level zero to one we can change it um, uh, we can just call it ladder that'll do it just says ladder <laughs> if it's not really obvious that's what it is okay so We've created everything now. We've created walls. We've created our two levels. We've put roofs on. We've put our doors in. We've put our ladder in. Now it's time to test it. I can actually close this levels bit completely. Don't need that anymore. We've done. Let's drag. Of course it's going to be Haley. It's always going to be Haley. We can pop Haley out here on the map. Haley can't see anything. <laughs> Hang on a second. Uh, I think I forgot to say uh, global illumination. Thank you very much. That's better. All right, Haley, try that again. So Haley can now wander around, and as expected, our walls are working just as we want. So she can walk all the way around here, around the outside of this building. okay and it's leaving everything in a fog of war now what happens if she wants to go in this side door i mean obviously she can't but as soon as she gets close let's zoom in for you as soon as she gets close that roof disappears automatically that roof is not hiding her anymore we can open this door and we can go in just as we would expect to got a slight issue with the clipping of the wall but that's fine that's just to do with my grid placement 
rather than anything to do with levels. So we can go in and out there and the roof automatically disappears. Okay, that's good. And bearing in mind, all of this is kind of automatically happening in the background. If we come to the front here, we can open this up and we can walk inside. We can see everything down here. As soon as you walk into the middle, look, we can see the balcony around the outside. If I walk under it though, it disappears so that I can carry on exploring whatever's under there, automatically hiding that. Easy peasy. Now when I go to the ladder, it's automatically brought me upstairs. Now because I put the movement things in, I'm trying to go down, it's not letting me, because I put those walls in, it's not letting me jump off. So I can go all the way around here, I can come check my window, and I see my window working. Hello, hello. Don't ask. <laughs> Okay, and then I can come back to the ladder and come down again. So bearing in mind that I'm talking you through that, oh, the door block, um, I'm talking you through how to do that. How easy is this to do once you've got the appropriate assets? And I think that's the, for me, that's the biggest challenge of this is you've seen me try to do artistic stuff. I'm not good. So while this module is completely free, our challenge may be getting hold of free assets that we can use that are designed like this. Now, Bailiwicky's going to have a bunch. Uh, there are the tons of them out there. It's about finding those reliable ones. Remember that also we looked at um, uh, Forgotten Adventures as well with all of their maps and battle maps and things like that. Um, there may well be some that are on there that are free as well, that are designed for levels. Um, but there may also be paid content. What I, w I, I mean, I think this is brilliant. It's so, while it's a complicated module, it's actually really, really easy to do, the, like the basics. We've only scratched the surface of what we've done here. And to be perfectly honest, for a lot of stuff you might want to do, um, this might be all you need. I think it's quite neat. Um, you know, especially for like little inns and taverns going upstairs and stuff like that. It's probably all you need. Just have a quick look at the uh, the tile browser here. Um, and these are just the ones that come with the module, Bailiwicky ones. There's a basement. Okay, so you can up, up and down the stairs in the basement. Um, there's farmhouse. So it looks like there's a field and then the farmhouse that goes with it, uh, with its ground floor, uh, with its, hang on a minute. Yeah, with its ground floor. Um, and then it's upper floor, it's roofs, there's some trees and things like that. So, of course, we can put out trees and we can put them on different levels. So, again, you walk under them um, and things like that that we can do. So, lots and lots of interesting uh, options with it. It's going to be about getting hold of those graphics and stuff. Um, we will go on to look at some of the kind of the paid content and things because obviously you know there are other options that people want to use that include paid content but I just want to make sure that wherever possible we're giving people the ability to use Foundry as full as possible without spending any extra money okay because not everybody can afford to do that and the last thing we want more people playing games more people playing Dungeons and Dragons and things like that and when we start putting costs involved we create barriers that prevent people from being able to play it's why wizards of the coast have done things like those introductory modules they're going oh kind of have it for free um through D, &D beyond you've got the introductory um players rules so they could start playing for free obviously they want them to spend money afterwards but if we just say you can't even start this hobby until or this life it's not a hobby is it? it's a lifestyle <laughs> We all know that. If you're watching this video, you know that. Um, but we don't want to put those barriers in way for people. So I want to try and make sure people can access as much as possible without those barriers. That's what I'm trying to say. You know that. I've said it more than once. Um, but having said that, also, if we want to go more sophisticated um, and take things beyond that, we will need to look at some paid content. Um, we've already looked at um, the, uh, um, the FA stuff, which includes quite a lot of paid content as well as free. So, so far, I'm really happy with this. Um, again, I'll, what I will do in the comments, uh, sorry, in the description, I'll put a link to um, the Ripper 93's wiki page for this specific thing so that you can go and follow it yourself if uh, my video doesn't make sense because, you know, I just babble a lot. I'm doing it right now. 
Um, I will put a link to that um, as well. And also be aware that um, the Ripper 93 has a, uh, a Discord server that you are more than welcome to join. There's no reason why you couldn't. Um, where there's lots of people who are using all the, all of his mods, including this one. If you get really stuck and you want help, um, they may be able to point you in the direction of assets and things like that. So uh, it's really good. Just want to point out, by the way, um, this video is not remotely sponsored or anything by uh, the Ripper 93. Uh, I just like what he's doing. I like his stuff. Um, if ever I am being sponsored for anything like this or people have specifically asked me to do something, I will tell you. Um, because I'm, I will never tell you something's good if it's actually crap. I just won't. Because it doesn't help anybody. I'm going to stop mumbling. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, let me know if, you, uh, if you're if you using this already. Um, if you know where there are assets that we can share with everybody else, that would be really, really good. Uh, obviously, make sure that those assets are free to use. Okay, we don't want to be infringing any copyright or anything like that. Nobody paying for content and then distributing them. Thank you. Certainly not through my channel. Um, that would be great. But yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I think it's beautiful. How much will I use it? I'm not too sure, but I've got a feeling once I start looking at assets and stuff, um, I think it will get used more and more. I mean, this is just a really basic barn and it's like, yeah, I can see that being used. Take care, guys. Bye.